Hey everyone, welcome to another week and the last week that we're looking at John. Welcome back to Work in Progress, guys. It's truly a blessing that we are here today. And as usual, before we start, I'd like to just invite the Holy Spirit to dwell among us. So can I have two volunteers, please? Someone to pray and someone to sing a prayer chorus. Anybody? Okay, thanks, Jenna. So Jenna will sing a prayer chorus. So Brandon will pray. You can go ahead, Jenna. Thanks, guys. We bless you at the highest place. Oh, you are the great high priest. We bless you. Amen. Loving Father God in heaven, we just want to pause to right now to glorify your name and to give you the right place that you deserve, Almighty Savior. God, if at any point in this week we have acted otherwise or we have prioritized other things or other people, God, even right now we just want to apologize and allow you to again reclaim the position that you deserve in our lives. God, we glorify your name. You've been such a good friend, a faithful friend unto us, Almighty Savior. Time and time again, God, you have provided, you have protected. God, even things that we don't see, you have sent your mighty angels, oh God, to be round about us. And so, God, I just want to say hallelujah and thank you, Lord. And even as we're about to open your word, God, recognize that the wisdom of man is foolishness unto you. And so, God, we avail ourselves to the voice of the Holy Spirit, even now, Almighty God, to give us spiritual insight to understand your word. God, he says spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And so even now, God, we humble ourselves to your wisdom and ask God that you lead us into all truth. God, we claim the promise of your word, O oh God, that reminds us that the role of the comforter is to help us to understand. So help us to understand, O oh God. And I pray, God, that tonight you would provide a word for somebody who may be anxious or discouraged, Almighty Savior, that you will remind somebody of your promises to them and that that soul would be quieted, would be encouraged and would be empowered. God, we bless your name and give you thanks in advance for the mighty things that you are going to perform tonight. We thank you, mighty Savior, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, General and Brandon. So tonight we have other things planned. So excited for tonight. We have we're gonna be finishing up John 21. So we're at the end of John now. We'll be sharing our testimonies and then we'll have a little quiz at the end just to see what we remember and all that fun stuff. So really excited. Looking forward to an interactive night with you guys. And yeah, so right now we'll give it over to Vicky. So over to you, Vix. Hello, everybody. Good evening, good evening. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are in the last chapter of John, which we're so excited about. It's been an amazing journey to go through John together with you guys. <laughs> All right, so last week we went through from verses, this is going to be John chapter 21. We went through verses 1 
to 17, and I'm just going to do a, a short recap. Feel free to raise your hand if you want to add anything or you want to comment on anything, all right? So, of course, we started off with um, Peter and the other disciples going fishing in Galilee. And the question, a lot of scholars have different points of views as to why Peter even got up and decided to go fishing in the first place. Some say it was a sign that they had turned back. Some say, you know, it was just their family needed to be fed. But what I found was in Matthew's account, um, the, the angel at the empty tomb had actually directed the women and the quote, this is Matthew 28 verse 7 said, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. So that's another thought that it is actually the angels that directed the disciples that Jesus is going to be in Galilee so they can meet him there, right? So there's our some school of thought. All right, so we move down to verses four to six where they throw their nets at the right side of the boat, um, which is, of course, reminiscent of the first miracle of throwing your net over to the side, and it's a miraculous catch. Um, this miracle is similar, but very different in detail to the miracle that took place when the disciples had just met Jesus. And this is recorded in Luke 5, verses 4 to 11. And last week, we had gone through some of the differences um, in terms of how Peter reacted this time around versus how he reacted in the first time like he was you know a little shy um it indicates how the cycle the the disciples have come full circle the first um the first encounter committed their lives to christ after a miraculous catch and now at the end they are invited to recommit themselves to the risen christ after a similar miracle this time using the analogy feed my sheep rather than the earlier analogy which was be fishers of men right and then we see this whole dramatic scene of peter running ashore towards jesus right he girds himself and he dives off the boat and then runs towards um jesus which is something i definitely think we should all emulate you know we should all be diving off and running towards jesus so again, this act indicates how the disciples have come full circle. Where, while in Luke's account, the first miracle of the, um, the miraculous catch, Peter wants to get away from the holy Jesus, offering that he is not worthy. But this time, Peter can't wait to get to Jesus. He can't wait to be assured to be with Jesus, right? And then the other one, verses 12 to 14, we see Jesus offering the disciples breakfast. And there's this line where I absolutely love, probably my favorite line in the entire chapter, come and eat, right? Jesus taking bread and fish and giving it to them is quite reminiscent of the feeding of the 5,000, um, which is in chapter 6, verse 11. And for me personally, it was reminiscent of the Last Supper, right? It also reminds us of the servant of Jesus, and he wants to have always an intimate covenant relationship with us. It also, what I did mention last week is that now that when I was reviewing it this week, it also gives me a reminder of the provider that Jesus is, that nature of, of God being the Jehovah Jireh, you know, um, he supplied bread and fish to the 5,000, and here he is again providing for his men. He provided by having them throw the nets on the other side, and they got more than they could manage just at the first time, and not, he didn't up there he he sat on the shore and was actually making breakfast for them in the meantime you know so it also gives us a reminder of even the risen christ being our provider right and then we go into you know probably um the most famous part of this chapter peter do you love me feed my sheep so peter denied jesus 
three times. And a lot of scholars believe that the reason why Jesus lets him repeat that three times is, is a form of renewing him or, or redeeming him from that act. You denied me three times, so I'm going to ask you this three times. A lot of scholars believe that, right? And he calls Peter to preach by, uh, by telling him to feed my sheep. Through this exchange, Jesus assures Peter publicly that he has been restored to the ministry of caring, leading, and edifying God's flock. Because last week we kind of looked at the, the, the Greek word that was used, the Greek, I hope it was Greek, the word that was used when Jesus said, feed my sheep. And we realized that it was three different instructions three slightly different instructions that Jesus was giving. One is to care for his flock. One is to feed his flock spiritually. And one is to lead his flock. And this is really, to me, this moment, a really awesome um, example of God's grace. Because again, just like in the beginning, in chapter 20, we see that Mary Magdalene was not disqualified by her past to be the first messenger of Christ's resurrection. We see here again that our past does not, our past or our mistakes does not disqualify us from being called by God to do amazing things. And we know Peter from this moment goes on to do even more amazing things than what he was doing before. And even though Jesus had called him previously to be the rock, on this rock will I build my church, um, he had denied Christ. And I bet Peter himself thought he lost that privilege, right? But right here, Jesus says, no, you are still the rock on which I want to build my church, despite the fact that you denied me in such a, a hurtful way. So to me, it was really, really not just a, a really loving ex, ex, um, exchange between two brethren, between master and servant, or, you know, it is really a picture of perfect grace and God's forgiveness and God's willingness to, to use us once we're willing to repent and come to him and to be used by him, right? So now we move on to verse 18 to the end, 25. And I'm going to ask my favorite reader, <laughs> Brandon. Are you able to read for me tonight, Brandon? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so just read from 18 to the end and we'll get into it. All righty, so John chapter 21, verses 18 to the end. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. It reads, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will tell that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifies of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right. So the first part of this that I um, want us to, to tackle is verses 18 to 19. And it says, very truly, I tell you, 
When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. All right, guys. Does anybody want to jump in on these two verses? Yes, Julie. I have a question. How did Peter die? It was a, from what I recall. I'm not sure if I'm right or not. You guys can correct me. But he was also crucified on a cross, but upside down, right? Was that the case? So, so um, from my research, um, let me see if I read it. So they said that many scholars say that Peter was crucified upside down in Rome. That's what I have in my notes, that many scholars believe that that's how he was crucified. So that's all we have on that side with that. That's what most people believe, that that's exactly how he died. Okay, that's interesting. Especially seeing that Jesus says, follow me afterwards. Not sure that's why he said that, but yeah, interesting stuff. But back to verse 18. I'm not sure if I fully get it. The part that says, um, someone else would guard you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Uh, anybody could explain verse 18 to me a little bit more? I feel like it's clear cut, but I'm, I don't know. I like getting it. Does anybody want to tackle that? I have notes, but I want to put it out there to everybody first. Okay. <laughs> All right, so to answer Julie's question and just to go through the notes I have and then everybody else can join in if you feel like. Um, so I have, when you put together the reference to crucifixion with the girded or tied by another, you realize that this prophecy probably refers to the common Roman practice of tying the cross piece onto the condemned man's shoulders prior to crucifixion, and then carrying the cross piece as a cross led to the place of crucifixion, which is actually what um, Jesus did when you had to actually carry your cross. And this seems to be how John understood the prophecy, which had already taken place by the time John's gospel was written. Many scholars say that Peter was crucified upside down in Rome. So the whole idea of verse 18, according to um, you know, what other persons believe, is that um this was a foreshadowing, like Jesus was prophesying Peter's death, and it was prophesying his death by crucifixion. So the idea that he would, you know, when you're younger, you would normally dress yourself, but when you get older, as you're persecuted. In my um in my kingdom for doing my kingdom work, you will be your hands will be stretched out, which is the the idea of you know the crucifixion, and then you will be somebody else will dress you and lead you, which is the gird you and lead you where you don't want to go. So the idea is that this is actually a description of crucifixion, which is how many people. Um, believe Peter actually died. So that's verse 18, right? Note that John says the prophecy signifies what kind of death would glorify God. And I love that. I love the fact that he, he, he highlighted that. It, it's not just, oh, Jesus prophesied Peter's death, but it's this death that glorifies God, right? And 
I have a question. Is it comforting to know that you're that you're being, or is it comforting to be told by your master, by your Lord, that your death will glorify him? Is that something you would have found comforting in the moment? Anybody? Yes or no? <laughs> yes, Brandon. I mean, it's better than the alternative than for him to say, yo, your death wouldn't be glorifying to me. So I guess relative to the alternative, the fact that even in our death, we can glorify God, I think is encouraging. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. And you, Julie, what were you saying? You said both. Explain. Yeah, I said both. Like, yeah, I totally agree with what Brandon is saying. Like, if Jesus was supposed to say that to me, then I'd be like, wow, my death is going to be, yeah, that death, right? But the human side to me is going to be thinking, I'm going to die. I'm going to leave my people. And it's going to be because of this man. Like, yeah, he is my savior. But then, you know, like the faith part, that's probably not the, the firmest right now. It's going to be thinking about, okay, this is death. This is probably going to be really painful. I'm not going to like the, the process of this. I'd rather just be quickly done. But as Brenda was saying, like the fact that my that God will be glorified through it, that's, that's great too. So yeah, both. That's a good one. That's fair enough. Thank you, Julie, for sharing that honest answer. And it actually reminds me of, um, this sermon that I listened to that speaks about geez, God always gives you the prom the but first, right? Because not only is it that He predicts His death, what happens right before that, right? He actually reinstates Him, He actually reconciles with Him, He redeems Him right before that, right? And the next thing He does is predicts His death. And then after him predicting that, like you said, he tells him to follow him, right? And that's, this reminds me of Jesus. So when you read Luke, I'm going to read Luke 2, verses 28 to 35. And it says, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, this is when they brought Jesus as a baby to be blessed by um, Simeon, right? And he says, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, you have promised you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father, Mary and Joseph, marveled at what was said about him, about Jesus. And then Simeon blessed them. And said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken again so that the thoughts of many hearts sorry, <coughs> sorry, will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul. One moment. And it ends by saying, and a sword will pierce your own soul. After all of that, right? It is a description of all the amazing things that Jesus will do. And then it ends with, and a sword will pierce your own soul. God has this thing about giving us the promise first. And then we go through a hardship. We see it throughout the Bible many times. We see it with Abraham where he is promised a child, but he's not, he doesn't get the child till years later, but he has that promise to hold on to. We see it with David, where he's anointed king, but it's years later before David is anointed king, but he has that promise to hold on to. And we see it with Joseph, where Joseph gets this dream, but it would be years later before he sees that dream come to life, but he's faithful knowing that God gave him that dream, right? <laughs> I'm kind of seeing the same thing happening here. And like what you played into Brandon is this idea that Jesus reinstates Peter and lets him know that I love you, feed my sheep, right? And then he comes back to him 
And he's like, you know, this is the way you're going to die, but you're going to die glorifying me. So to me, the, I love that sermon because it's the idea that God always gives you a promise to hold on to. He gives you the but first. That was the sermon. He gives you the but first, you know, but it's going to be tough. But, but you go glorify God. So I absolutely love that, Brandon. Thank you so much for sharing that. <coughs> You know, we're, we are, I think all of us, somewhere inside us or straight out, God has made a promise to us. God, if you have that personal relationship with God somewhere, somehow, God has communicated either in a still small voice or something that he's put within you or something that he said out loud to you that you heard quite clear, clearly. He had made a promise to us and many times that promise don't look like it, it don't look good none at all like really like sometimes you question yourself whether or not you really heard that or is your own you know schizophrenia that told you that or something but when we read these stories you know it's we're reminded to remember what god told us it will be scary it is a scary journey, you know. It's it, he doesn't promise he doesn't promise an easy life, but he does promise glory to God, you know. So let's hold on to that. Let's see. Yes, Liana, jump in. I I just wanted to like kind of add on to what you were saying because as you were talking, as I was remembering a scripture that literally said, "God's word can never return to him void." So if he says something to you. And even if you're not sure, like, let's say you feel it, somebody say it to you, like somebody prophesy over your life or prophesy over a situation that you're going through. Test the spirit. And you test the spirit by comparing what they have said to the word of God and who you know God to be through his word, right? And once you're able to discern that this is coming from God, hold on to it, never let it go, because worse if it's something mighty, the enemy is going to try, he's going to try with thoughts, with situations, you get me? And the other day I was at church and this guy was saying, you know, sometimes when we're praying and even if we have an ounce of doubt, that ounce of doubt can literally make the prayer just obsolete, like, like we're praying amiss. Because if you you're praying to God and you have doubt. You're not believing that he'll do it. Where's your faith? And then it goes into the fact that faith, like, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. Like, sometimes I literally have to fight myself to have faith, especially in this season. I feel like I'm talking about 10 million things at once. But I hope you got, got the um, the message. But, yeah. Trust me, even if you, you it feels like you're talking 10 million things at one, we're getting it. We're getting it. We we connected over here. It is so true. Yes, Julie, jump in. Yeah, and just to add to what you guys are saying, it's so important to remember. Like, it's the easiest thing for our flesh to remember how faithful God has been to us, you know. And I've been talking about anxiety a lot, but it has really been opening my eyes to see certain things. Be careful one second, trusting God, knowing that God is good and all of that. And a second later, that's me again in total doubt and fear, you know. And that's why God tells us to remind ourselves of God's promises to us like even um Romans 10 verse 17 that says faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ sometimes not sometimes literally every time we have to speak the word of God over ourselves and sometimes we need to say it out loud too for us to hear it and to remind ourselves that hey you know, things may not be looking the brightest right now, but that doesn't mean that the light is within me, is not within me, you know. So, yeah, remembering it's such an important thing. Amen, amen. Come on. Y'all teaching up in here. I love this. Amen. Anybody else wants to jump on before I move on? Hi, Joshua. Welcome. 
anybody else wants to talk about this i absolutely love that <laughs> anybody else want to, want to say something before i move on okay so the final thing i want to touch on in this that i saw um also brandon touch on is the follow me right like we don't want to jump over those two words follow me I love the fact that even after predicting, sorry, even after predicting Peter's death, Jesus says, follow me. You know, it's almost like the audacity <laughs> of telling me I'm going to die and then say, yeah, but come, <laughs> you know. But it also um, gives me a sense, in my opinion, a sense of completion, a full circle again, right, in the, in the restoration of of um peter's calling because just like the first miraculous catch when he invited peter to follow him and he will make him um pictures of men here jesus again calls peter to follow him and this time to feed his sheep so to me that follow me was like a perfect full stop you know and do you know that we're the only country that uses the word full stop like I can't find it. <laughs> I use the word full stop. But yeah, to me, that follow me was like a perfect full stop. I can't. Do you know any other country that uses the word full stop? I cannot find. Like one time I said the word full stop and somebody was totally lost. Like what? And I said full stop. And they're like, what? <laughs> it was hilarious. But yes, I think the word follow me right there is a perfect period, full stop, whatever it is and full mark of the full circle right there and i think it's it's so interesting that jesus says follow me right after predicting Peter's um death okay so we're gonna move on to 20 to 23 and it says peter turned and saw the disciples from jesus sorry, love was yes go ahead. <laughs> sorry um i was just reading over that verse again and you know, we've been talking about the type of death that Peter would have had and then, you know, follow me after. But I'm just thinking, like, breaking it down a bit more. So, or maybe you guys already got this and it's me just getting it now. I don't know. But I'm going to share it just the same. Um, the death would have died. Peter would have died through crucifixion. And, you know, and we've talked about crucifixion before. But how... You know, we can't crucify ourselves. Like, Jesus has to do that for us. And although um, Jesus is talking about a literal death right here, crucifixion would have also represented as spiritual death. And the fact that Jesus mentions that first, and then to follow Jesus is like saying, hey, you know, just like what we've been saying again, you have to crucify flesh in order to truly follow me you can't still be living that old life and following me like it don't go together you know it just came through i don't know if you know, but yeah that's it <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen we have officially had our drape up moment of the evening brought to you by julie sponsored by work in progress thank you very much <laughs> You know, we can't, work in progress is not complete until we have a drape up moment in the session. So thank you, Julie. <laughs> was that, what was that sponsored by? I feel like it was Lasco. Thank you so much for that drape up moment. I love it. But yes, that is that is actually well said, well put. Um, it, it does speak to us loudly that we are called to crucify spiritually before we can actually completely surrender ourselves to do a righteous, a rightful, a proper follow me, right? That is actually true. But you know what I love? Something that you mentioned last week, Julie, the fact that um, you asked the question whether or not Peter had turned back or the disciples had turned back by going fishing. And I made the point that even if that was the case, the, the point that Jesus, the point, the point that Jesus, the fact that Jesus met them there, and it and it comes back to what you're just saying too, is that even even when we fail at crucifying our flesh or or doing it right, right, 
Jesus still meets us where we are and convicts us to change, which is what he does with Peter here, reconciles him to him. Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. So I can I can picture Jesus stopping by when, when I'm not doing so well and saying, Victoria, do you love me? Feed my sheep. You love me, follow me. Do you love me? And I can picture him, you know, asking me that three times or probably for me, it wouldn't be three, probably it would be seven or 10 or 12, you know, like a couple of times. Jesus would be asking me, I don't think it would be three. And saying, Victoria, do you love me? If you love me, it's not what you're doing and feed my sheep. Crucify your flesh and follow me. So yeah, and I love the fact that Jesus is still willing to meet us where we are, no matter what, right? Okay, nine o'clock, let's go. Y'all, y'all getting me emotional. <coughs> let's not do that. <laughs> yes. All right, then. So Jesus predicts John's long life. So Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread around among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? Do you guys have any comments on these few verses? Jump in. Yes, friend. Oh, I think you may want to read Janelle's comment first. Can you read it for me, Brad, that I'm struggling over here? Yeah, no problem. So Janelle says, if Peter was on water in that moment, he'd sink for sure. Because I think in a sense, he shifted his focus from Jesus and what Jesus was asking of him. We really ought to not so much worry about the task plans Jesus has for others and more so focus on what he requires from us. Absolutely. Amen. In complete agreement with Janelle. And I was going to say something along similar lines. You know, I almost, if this was like in the Jamaican context and like this was just a Bible playing out in Jamaica, I can almost imagine Jesus telling Peter, you're mind your own business. Like literally, that's what he's saying, mind your own business. Focus on me and 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 that's sufficient. And, you know, it, it's such an important reminder because, and it's not just about like looking at other people and other people's business, but just the general distractions of life. Jesus simply says, follow me, keep your eyes focused on me. Don't worry about Pam and Sheila. Don't worry about anybody else and, you know, their very unique journeys. No, nah, and you know, a lot of times uh, Christians run up into problems where they try to either emulate somebody else's journey or they're wondering why is that person's journey this way or why are the unique nuances of theirs? Why are they getting these blessings? Why are they experiencing these things? Not knowing full well that God has curated our experience, our journey because of our real spiritual needs, our very real spiritual weaknesses. And it's when we get caught up in looking at the supposed greener grass on the other side that we'll miss out on how God is using our experience and our journey for our good and his glory. So yeah, sometimes we just need to mind our own business and focus on Jesus Christ as, what is it, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's what God calls us to focus on. Amen. I love that. Anybody else wants to comment on these few verses before we move on? All right, guys. I didn't have um much to say about this, so thank you so much. Brandon, for that edification on mind your own business, walk your path. Um, as, as usual, I'm always bringing up a sermon. I, I, I listened to a sermon the other day that spoke about um, walking your own lane. And she used the analogy of driving, right? And she said that um, as a new driver, a lot of people tend to be tempted by watching the other vehicles, right? You're learning to drive. 
and you tend to focus on the other vehicles because it's like you don't want them hitting to you and you don't want hitting to them. So instead of just watching your lane, you're kind of watching the vehicles around you, trying to avoid hitting them or, or watching to see if they're going to hit you. <clears throat> but what the um, pastor was saying was, when you do that, you tend to drift. If you're not careful, you tend to drift and that's when problems occur, right? So her thing was that in everything we do, including our faith, focus on your lane. Don't focus on who is going faster than you. Don't focus on who has a prettier car than you. Focus on your lane. That way you won't trick. Because at the end of the day, Christ formed us in our mother's womb. We were created specifically for a purpose, for his purpose. And the only time we're able to fulfill that purpose in a in a way that will glorify God, you know, <laughs> is if we focus on the work that Christ um, commissioned us to do and not what other people do. So I love the fact that you brought that up, Brandon, to say, look here, focus on what you were doing. No, focus on your journey, focus on your relationship, because sometimes when we gaze at other people, then that's when we tend to droop. But then again, you know, if we are willing to repent and turn to God, we are a God. We serve a God, sorry. We serve a God. <clears throat> that is always willing to meet us, even when we swerve, even when we end up in our other people lane where we're not supposed to, you know, Jesus will come find us and put us back, you know, and that's why we speak, we, we, we pray about making our path straight. If we submit everything to him, everything we do to him, in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight or he will direct your path. So thank you so much, Brandon. For bringing that up because i had no idea what i was going to say about these verses more than jesus looks like he's predicting john's long life all right so let's get down to the end guys 24 to 25 anybody wants to jump in feel free to raise their hand okay this is the disciple who testified to these things and who wrote them down we know that his testimony is true 25 and long jesus did many things as well if every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world will not have room for the, for the books that would be written. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> this is the last verse in John. I don't know. That's a good question. Why can't John never say his name? John need everybody to know that he was the most loved. <laughs> So these are the notes I have on these last verses. And anybody can jump in and comment. And comment about anything in the entire chapter. I have. <clears throat> this is an attestation that John personally wrote the gospel. And they know from him personally that his testimony is true. Only a small part of the actions of Jesus had been written. Selections were made with one purpose in mind. To help people believe in Jesus and experience his life and have life through it. Much of what is written is overlooked, much is forgotten, and much is made a matter of doubtful dispute. However, these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Amen. So anybody wants to come in on the last chapter and last few verses of john this was such a beautiful journey come on guys jump in Come on, guys. Nobody wants to come in. And this is like a perfect end. <laughs> I want to say that I love the way John made it clear from the beginning what his purpose was in writing this book, right? It is about sharing what Jesus did and why he knows that Jesus is the son of God, right? And he comes back and he ends the chapter 
with this statement of, of clear declaration, right? And I, I hope that even us as Christ followers, as Christians, will take this particular verse, verse 25, and remember that, how do I word this though? Remember that it is our duty to believe and it's our duty to study the word and it's our duty to share Christ, to share God, to share his word, whatever way you want to share it. It can be as simple as sometimes I see people post something on WhatsApp status and it's just it's just a, a Bible verse in the moment or mind or like Julie was saying, the, the most powerful thing we can do is remember. Sometimes it's as simple as just a WhatsApp post and it can just absolutely turn my day right side up. It's just it's just something that reminds me that God loves me and God is for me. And as Christians, we're called to do it. We're not called to do it the same way. Again, walk in your own lane. Do what comes naturally to you. Do what is comfortable to you. I mean, even something like this that that um I have to commend Julie all the time for creating this space where we can come and share like this. I would have never feel comfortable doing this if it wasn't for this platform, you know? So all of us are called to walk our own lane and do things differently. But at the end of the day, it's for the same purpose, to believe in God and to go, amen, to glorify God in everything we do and to share God, to share it, to share him through his word, share him through our testimonies, share him through our encouragement, share him through edification in forums like this, to share God, you know? So going through John, it was a beautiful journey and a reminder of that, of who Jesus was, what he stood for, and what we are called to do. And I love the fact that this is the last chapter that literally calls us to feed his sheep. So that's my two cents on this chapter. Okay, if nobody has anything else to say, oh, jump in, Liana, and then Julie, you can take over. I just wanted to add to what you're saying regarding the importance of sharing. And I specifically wanted to touch on sharing your testimony. Guys, I am learning that you never go through your testimony for yourself. You never go through it for so long upon it and don't tell nobody. You literally went through that testimony so you can testify and others that are going through the same thing can hear and to say, listen, God did it for her. God did it for him. So why can't God do it for me? You know, not comparing. We're not saying, oh, my life and their life is similar. So God is going to move in the exact same way. No, but you know, if a true Christian is listening, they can see the principles or the basis of what you're saying and discern and know what to take from it versus what, you know, what applies. <laughs> but yeah, guys, sharing your testimony is really, really important. We went through it because God wants us to share it with others and encourage people. You know, as hard as it may seem and as uncomfortable as it is sometimes, because even me, you know, we all go through those things. But get over that block and share your testimony, guys. You never know how it can bless somebody. Yeah. All right. Amen. 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 I think that is such a beautiful way to go into our testimony segment. Like, I saw what the Holy Spirit just did right there through Leanna. So we're, we're working with it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vicky, for leading out um john 21 and finishing up this beautiful book this has been such a blessing guys such a blessing you know it's amazing that even though you would have gone through some of these verses and some of these chapters before the way we really broke things down within this group and like go into such detail and even this John 3 16 even verses that we know from you know where baby is coming up and just seeing how intentional God is with everything is such an amazing thing so you know all glory to God thank you guys for coming over for being on this journey with us it has as I said truly been a blessing 
So yeah, now we can definitely just slide right into our testimony segment. So this is where you know we share our stories. If there's something that's if there's something that's laid on your heart for you to share, anything that you know resonated with you in John or just in your life, you know, the floor is open for us to share. So yeah, anytime you guys are ready. Julie, do you want to start, my baby? You want to kick it off? Oh my gosh, Becky, are you doing this? <laughs> Man, um, yes, actually, I do. I do. Ah, uh, okay, so anxiety has been a word that's been on my lips for the past month. And I am tired of the word, guys. I am so, so tired of the word. But, you know... It's crazy. Even when you're going through some hard times, if you allow your heart to be open to see what God is doing, you'd be amazed by the things that you're learning, even in the darkest times, you know? Um, so yeah, when we were actually going through the last couple of verses and Vicky was asking about, what was it? What verse was it? Um, Yes, Peter's death um, glorifying God. Something came to my mind immediately. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to share it then or if I'm sure I was supposed to share it now, but I feel like right now is the perfect moment. Um, so yeah, I've been really, really anxious for the past month. Um, right now, my hands are shaking. And you know, it's like irrational fears, things that don't necessarily have to be happening my mind is just like conjuring up some crazy thoughts but I have been fighting this guys I have been fighting um prayer fasting reading scripture and being vulnerable being vulnerable has really helped and you know I remember one day I was just thinking God for some strange reason I'm almost not happy, but I'm okay with going through this. Just because I know that when I make it through, I'll be able to talk to somebody who's going through it and I'll be able to, you know, relate to them. And uh, the following day, I was talking to someone and I hadn't told them that I was, that I've been feeling anxious. I actually been hiding it from them just because I know that they tend to worry a lot and I didn't want to put like extra burden on them, you know? But for some reason, I felt like the Holy Spirit was just telling me to talk to them, just tell them how I've been feeling. So I did that and I kept pausing. It's like, don't worry, I'm okay. (laughs) It's going to be fine. But, you know, this is how I've been feeling. And uh, they were silent for a while. And then they said, Thank you for telling me that because I've been going through the same thing. Guys, I almost teared up, but I had to stay strong because I, nah, so <laughs> you know. Um, they started telling me how they've been going through very similar things that I've been experiencing. And what I said to them actually has been, um, actually encouraged them. And I'm just there thinking, that is crazy that I'm on this other side with my hands shaking and I'm using my story that I'm still going through to help someone else. And I praise God in that moment because I'm thinking, you know what, God, I already know that although I'm fighting this battle right now, the war has already been won. And I am so grateful that while fighting this battle, you have helped me to touch somebody else's life and uh, yeah so back to that verse you know not only should our deaths glorify God but our lives our testimonies the little things that we're hiding because we're so ashamed of you'd be surprised how that can glorify God you are not enough I anxiety has really I'm not claiming it I'm I keep on saying the anxiety because I'm not claiming it. But honestly, anxiety has humbled me so much. 
just to remind me that I am not enough. And that's okay because God is more than enough. So even if you feel like your little story can't help somebody else, even if you you feel like you're not making it through, have enough faith to know that God can use you even in your weakest moments. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That was so beautiful. That was so good. Thank you, Julie. All right, guys, who else wants to share a testimony? We're sharing, we're encouraging each other right now. Next person. Good night, guys. Um, Hello, Janelle. Hi. All right, so in last December, I I got introduced to Danielle first. First time prayer is something I've been wanting to do. I've been especially because I'm addicted to food, unhealthy foods. And I've been putting it off and off. And January came and I said I was going to start with one week per month. And uh, because I didn't want to pressure myself, so I was going to just see where it goes from there. And January came and I realized that the week was going to come, which was the last week of January, the last full week in January, and I didn't have any groceries. Uh, so so I want the fast to be Daniel fast. It's like an amplified Daniel fast. It's not just fruit and vegetables, but healthier options that I can get instead of all the oil and cheese and milk and stuff that I always eat. So I didn't have like healthy food in my cupboard, and I also didn't have any money. And in my mind, I just put it off. And I wasn't sad that I put it off because, yeah, I can enjoy the food that I really want a little more. And after the week, like in the week, during the week, like I started feeling, you know, actually guilty and sad because eating healthier is something I knew that deep down I wanted to do. I just still letting the little pleasures get in my way, you know? And I still, I said I was going to do it in February and I still, you know, I don't send no money. So I was like, probably have to wait until March. But then I, um, somebody shared a story with me about um, some person that were praying for rain to come and only one guy, I don't remember where I heard it, it was like recently, 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 one one little boy carried an umbrella, yes, preparing for the rain, and the rain fell, and he was prepared, the blessing did come, and he was prepared to receive the blessing, so I said, okay, you know what, <laughs> I am going to make a schedule, I don't see the money, I don't have the groceries, but I'm going to be intentional. And I read what I was playing. I reread like Daniel 1 verse 8 where he said, Daniel purpose in his heart. And I said, God, I'm going to purpose in my heart. I'm going to make a schedule and everything. February is not going to end and I don't fast. Even if I can't do the one week, even, even if it's a day, I am going to take the time. And I'm going to fast and pray. And I made the schedule, um, everything I was going to do for devotion. And like, I'm a planner girl, I'm, I'm very organized. So I started everything for February and say, I'm going to do it. Still don't have no money. Last week was my birthday and the start after my friends and I were going, were going to the Bible study to kind of celebrate it. I left out the house Saturday morning with less than $500 in my name. I did not have $500, but I still trusted that God would provide somehow. I didn't know that he would do it that day, but I was still going to fast. And <laughs> thank you. And even if I didn't get the groceries, well, i will be fasting from food in general, which would still be fine because i needed to fast and pray regardless and uh, um somebody gave me a, a paper bag and said i shouldn't open it yet and i should wait till i reach home and they said it's from all of them and i should say nothing i should just 
take it. I'm like, huh? But y'all don't know each other because it's like three different friend groups I make to have the Bible study with me. I'm like, well, you mean it's from everybody? Like, huh? When did you guys plan this? And when I reached home, it was $7,000. I was $7,000 rich. And I got the chance just last Thursday, I went on the road and I got to buy vegetables and fruits and all the things that I needed so that I can get to do my Daniel class, which is scheduled for the upcoming week. So I just really want to thank God for that blessing that he has allowed me to receive. That was so good. Glory to God. That was so good, Janelle. <laughs> you had me on the edge of my seat. I'm like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? That is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That Thank you. Jehovah Jireh always provides. Thank you. That's so good. Come on, guys. Who else wants to share the testimony? That was so good. Yes, Brad, don't jump in. Hey guys. So y'all know that last year I was, you know, going through going through it. You know, the whole business of like crossing lines I never thought I would. And you know, I made some stupid mistakes. And one of the Bible studies that really helped me in my season of self-forgiveness and you know acknowledging the mistakes that I had made and how I displeased God was the woman caught in adultery. That Bible study, when I say it, take me up and fling me over, that that was that Bible study for me. And it was so important for me during that time, the reassurance of, you know, God not condemning me, but empowering me to go and sin no more. And that was a journey that I was on post, you know, my sinful mistake. I needed now to, you know, allow God to help me work through the the shame, the guilt, and all of that, but more importantly, to go and sin no more. Now, you know, with the spiritual insight of God, I was able to identify the things in my life, the factors that led to that road of sin. And, you know, in my heart, I had purpose, you know, God, I am by your strength going to cut these things off so that they don't reoccur. You know, you say, I must avoid even, you know, the, the resemblance of temptation. So by your grace, I'm going to cut off my right hand before it offends me. So I say, all right, cool. I'll cut off these things here and there and there. But me with my idiot self decides, say, all right, with some things, though, I'm just going to watch them and see what happens. And, you know, just kind of hope that some things will happen again. And time went on and time went on. And I saw, saw how those things that I was supposed to be watching started to you know, reach into the space again. And, you know, with, it's not even naivety at this point. It was just dunceness. Dunceness to watch the things that God had called me to cut off. I was sitting there watching, allowing to repopulate the space that God said, yo, cut off. And the wake up moment for me was earlier uh, in this year, around January, where I saw how fast approaching the line that I said by God's grace I was not going to return to was kind of staring at me around the corner. And I remember messaging Matthew and, and, and being open and honest with him about it and talking about it. And we prayed together and the whole accountability and, and all of that good stuff. And this is kind of just my recounting of it to say that by God's grace, I was able to finally cut off what he had already told me to cut off. And the reason why I'm sharing this testimony is that, you know, it's so important to follow what God says, but not just follow what he says, to follow when he says to do it. You know, sometimes we like to play God and do this partial obedience thing where he says, yo, this is what I need you to do. I would say, yeah, man, God, you're right. I know that that is the case. But we like to tiptoe around it and say, you know, I'm going to watch it for a little bit. And then at some point in time, now nah, delayed obedience is still disobedience. And I was seeing that, you know, work its way back into my life. And so I'm just pausing to give God thanks for the strength and the power to do what he called me to do before it ended me flat on my face again. So 
apart from the shame and guilt that he's brought me through, I'm, I'm giving God thanks for my victory story that he continues to write and the victory that he has given me thus far. Amen. Amen. That was powerful. Yes, Liana. That was an accident. I meant to press the clap hands. <laughs> but it sounds like you're supposed to share a testimony, though. See there? It happened again. So come it to... does. I think this is the Holy Spirit making me involuntarily do things. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um... My testimony, honestly, I've been in this wilderness season, and I, I started telling Julia about it, but I didn't, I didn't finish. Um, I, like probably last year in December, I had to, I didn't have to, but I was presented with an opportunity as it relates to my job, and I had to make a decision or resign. And the decision that I would have made is something that I know that God never called me to do, you know? So through faith, I resigned and, you know, I didn't have any other jobs lined up, I, you know? And when it happened, like the day it happened, when I was presented with the opportunity, I went home and I cried. I was like, God, what's going on? Like, what you mean? <laughs> like, this is crazy. You know, and I lament and this and that. But God said to me, no faith. And I was reminded of all the times that, you know, I'm here telling people, guys, you have to have faith. And I'm I'm saying faith is everything. It's the substance of, you know, that scripture. And I'm, I feel like now is my time where God was like, okay, prove it. <laughs> like, prove the faith that you keep professing that people need to have and the faith that you're professing that you have, you know, and... I can tell you this season for me, it hasn't been easy. And even before the whole thing happened at work, God keep on, like he kept calling me on some fasting and guys, me as well, like some seven day fasting and like a fast till I tired of fast. And I didn't know, I didn't know. And it's true that I realized that you see when God is calling you to go to war or he's calling you to go in a certain season where you've probably never been through before or been through like at that in that level before he will prepare you so he was preparing my spirit from even before then because if the same thing that happened to me at work happened to me like probably a year ago a couple months ago i would have taken the opportunity that god didn't want me to take or i would have just like fell into depression and oh my gosh i'm a failure blah 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 whatever you know but because god built me up you know and i'm not gonna say oh every day because I've gotten, I've done interviews and the interviews that I've done, I've gotten offers, but one of them would be in the entertainment industry and that's not, I'm not, you know, I'm a Christian, we know the party and, the, you know, and the other one was just not something that I believe God was calling me to do. So, you know, I'm going through it, but at the same time, I'm trying my best to not lose sight of God and I know that now what he's doing is trying to give me a second. He's trying to build up my spirit, man, because it's now in this season I realized that while going to work every day, there are so many things that I was losing sight of. So like I was not able to read my word as much. I wasn't spending as much time as with as much time with God as I was before, you know. And on top of that, I want to mention the importance of watching like or being mindful of the persons that you talk to, the things that you talk about, the music that you listen, the things that you watch, as Brandon was talking about earlier. Earlier, Because those things can literally pollute your spirit. It can pollute your heart. You know, and then all of a sudden, you're having these thoughts that don't even sound like you, or don't even add up to what God wants you to think about. And you're like, where did this come from? Not knowing that it's the conversations that you're having with people. And even if, for example, gossiping was a thing at work, apparently, people at work like to gossip. <laughs> and I was saying to myself, I'm not really doing anything bad, you know, because I'm not saying anything, but I was still listening, which is still as guilty as saying something because I'm still allowing those things to come into my spirit. You know, not talking about a person doesn't do any justice. I'm still listening to the gossip and, and, and irrelevant things that God don't want me to listen to, you know, because those things corrupt your mind and, and, 
All right, let me try and get my thoughts together. Yeah, back to <laughs> back to no. So even now, I find that like he's been like pushing me to read my word more because yes, I know scripture, but like I wouldn't say I'm I, I know where they are. Like I'd like I'll be having a conversation and then a scripture just pop in my head. I can't say oh in Romans twelve verse thirteen. I can't say that because I don't know the word as I should, you know. I find that the important, like important things when it comes down to building a relationship with God and walking in this world as a Christian is the word, reading your Bible, praying, fasting, and all of those things. And it's very, very important to pray the word of God. You know, that makes your prayers so effective. And it's it's through this season I've been able to realize the importance of the word literally just reading like the the joy in reading the word like the bible is actually funny like it has jokes in there <laughs> you know and even it's a lot and some days i'm not gonna lie i feel like like well what am i doing like me not hungry or suffer or whatever but it's like you know you're an adult you should be working whatever but God did give me a dream like a couple months ago, like even before this whole thing with the job happened about working at somewhere new, you know, a different place. So I am believing God for that to come to pass, but I know that he's preparing me from now because him no want, him not going to give nothing we ain't not ready for because him don't want you, you get me? So the blessing is out there, you know, it's just me to prepare my spirit, prepare myself. So I reached a place to receive it, you know? So yeah, guys, keep me in your prayers. <laughs> keep me in your prayers, but yeah. Look at that. That my girl, that was so powerful. I look at your, your turn off mic and sing at all. But, oh, it was just an accident. <laughs> that was so powerful. That was that was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Joshua, are you available to talk or no? You want to share a testimony as well? Hello everyone. Hi. Yeah, you know, like um the last other weeks I've I came I kept on saying, Oh, I can't talk because you know my computer's mic hasn't been working. Only for Google though, like it works on Zoom. But then it just dawned on me just now when you asked me, Vicky, I was like, wait, I have a phone. I can <laughs> I can just talk on my phone. Um if I'm being honest. I'd have to even collect my thoughts to think of any specific, like any testimony right now in my life. I've been, you ever in a stage in your life where it's like, boy, yeah, man, you know, read the Bible, fast and pray. But it's like, you don't even have the strength to do that. I you like, but you want to get better and closer to God. But even that process seems very difficult. That's where I am right now. Like this past week, I've been getting up every day with a migraine. And I thought it was because I had a, a midterm on Monday, which I slept through. I had to do a make. I'm having to do a makeup exam, and it's like I'm. I ask myself, "Am I okay, Lord? Am I like I'm talking to God and and stuff?" But it's just like, is I didn't even want to complain because I know that other people have it rough, so I didn't even want to complain. But it's like when someone said earlier about the umbrella to be prepared for God's blessing and stuff. I was just like, yeah, you need to do that. All these stuff come into my mind. It's just like, why aren't you doing them? But, you know, it's like, I'm not even there. It's like, this this week has been very difficult in the sense that I started to get down to the real question. Like, I was just like, God, why? Like, I don't even want to, it's not like I'm challenging God, but at the same time, I'm just like, God, you know, you're making this really hard for me. 
I'm just kind of sit stuck there like a sitting duck because it's like I feel like Job is like I really want to talk too hard to the boss man, but at the same time, I'm struggling with this and. It's something I've struggled with before. It's just almost like, why am I revisiting this? I just did. It's like Joshua, you just need to have faith. Come on, but that isn't enough for me. And I guess I'm trying to, like, even when I read the word. I open the Bible, say, God help me to see something to like read, just to read your word. And sometimes it helps. Sometimes it doesn't really. Like I read something and I'm just like, okay, maybe it's because it's not structured. I think I put a lot of, what can I do differently? And sometimes I just, I don't know what I can do differently. It's like, all right, fast and pray. But with my schedule sometimes on school, I'm not even, it's not even, I'm not even eating to say let's fast and pray. You know, it's just very complicated, but I'm still hopeful. Like I realized when I was speaking to other people about God, I was just like, look how am I encouraging these people? And I'm here struggling and I'm giving these people this godly like you know you should do this and it's coming out of my mouth and i'm just like but i'm not there i'm not there with you guys like but i know like when i'm saying it i'm confident that it's the truth but for myself i'm not there and that's what i'm feeling right now i it's, it's a it's a mixture of thinking i know what i need to do i just need to do it and stop lounging around but also feeling very stuck so th that's where i am so maybe the testimony will come next week or something but that's where I am now, right now, guys. Yes, Liana. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, Liana, jump in. Joshua, thank you so much for sharing, sharing that because I didn't know how to say that because I felt like that, like, I don't want to say on a daily basis, but that feeling comes. You know, I remember somebody asked me a question about they're essentially going through something similar and they're saying Lena she's a new believer as well and she's like Lena this is too hard like I feel like I want to give up and that's serious and when she asked me that I I hadn't prayed in like you know a while I didn't want to read my word I didn't want to talk to God I was just down and I literally mustered up the strength and said listen Whatever I say has to come from the Lord. And I said, I need to go and read my Bible. And I went outside and I started from Psalms 1. And I just I just started reciting the Psalms until I felt like, okay. Like I said it and it took me a while to say it. Like I meant it, you know. But I, I, I continued and I persevered. I, I was searching for God. Like relentlessly searching for God. And maybe it's because of what the girl said to me that pushed me. Because I find that as Christians... We're more eager to help other people most times. You know, just like what you said, when somebody comes to you with something and you don't even feel like you within yourself, if you were to ask yourself that question, you probably don't know what to say, but if somebody else come and ask you, it's just like, oh my, all right, well, you need to do this or you can do this because of the love of God that's within us. But at the same time, you have to allow Jesus Christ to show up for you. Like, Joshua, it's not easy. It's literally just a hump in the road, but you can't get over it. But it takes perseverance. I remember even with me and warfare, because what you sound like to me, it sounds like it's warfare. Whenever warfare would come, when it just stopped, I just want to lie down and just don't do nothing. But being a Christian, it's not a passive thing. Like every day we get up and we have to make conscious decisions to live for God. We have to fight those things out there that fight against us, those things that try to steal our peace and our joy, you know? So you, like, you have to decide, say, yo, I'm tired of laying down, like, I need to get up and I need to fight. I'm going to fight using the word of God. I know sometimes when you read the word, it's like, what am I reading? Like, God, what are you trying to say to me? What's going on? But push through push through and we're going to be praying for you i literally wrote it down pray for joshua <laughs> like we're going to be praying for you but please push through because you're going to get through this and god is building you up for another season because there's going to come a time where this might come up against you and you're just going to be like huh please that was so last year <laughs> so, yeah last month yesterday uh, yeah but yeah thank you i mean it's it's something that I even see reflected in like my schoolwork. When one of my classes, I feel like there's so much for me to know before I can even get started. And then my professor was like, oh, just try. 
And I got the question right. And I was just like, I need to acknowledge that there are stuff I don't know, like a plethora of things I don't know. But there's stuff that I do know, and I need to hold on to them. But I'm telling you, it's hard. I still feel like, man, I'm blank, man. I'm blank right now sometimes. It's like, I just want to sleep. But at the same time, as you said, when I used to, when I was younger, even growing up, I I said, God, when you have this big war theory at the end of this, put me on the front line because more I fight. Like, that was me. And I don't know if I set myself up when, when I prayed that when I was younger because rotted. Yeah, it, it rough. It. <laughs> no. Oh, man. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad I could share that because just talking to you guys make it feel a bit clear in my head. But, yeah, I want to be able to fast and pray. I want to... I, I just don't feel like I've been able to do those things. Like, I, I read my Bible when I get up in the morning and I try to be, like, grateful for each morning. When I see the sunrise, I'm just like, thank you, God. Um, But I still feel like there are things I'm not doing to equip myself with the with the faith. And living in this country is, is rough, man. With, the, with just the conflict of work and their, their secular, it's just very difficult. Not in the sense that I want to convert to them or anything. It's just difficult to be here sometimes. Um, um, but yeah, I'll definitely, I, I definitely want going. I want to win. I know that God wants me to win, so I'm there right now. But thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Joshua. Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much. That was so powerful. That was so good. Uh, we're at the 9.52 p.m. mark. <clears throat> so I don't know if Julie wants to go into priors and the prior list, Brandon. We can do that. But thank you guys for sharing. That was really, really, really powerful. Yeah, we can go into prayer now. But Madam Vicky... Where's your testimony, ma'am? You know that we weren't going to skip over you. You know. I was hoping I would. Because, <laughs> like Joshua, and, and that's why, Joshua, you have no idea how much you sharing that was amazing. Because, and I don't want to cry, <laughs> because that's exactly how I felt tonight. I, I didn't feel like I had a testimony. I felt like I had a prior request. Because like Joshua, I am I am struggling. Not like I'm here like living a sinful life or anything like that, but it's just that like Brandon was talking earlier, sometimes like you, you literally see yourself going down the road and it's like, instead of just putting a stop to it, you're kind of like, okay, you don't want to create drama. You just kind of want to be peaceful with everybody. So you kind of just watch it and I hope say, you know, it stay over there. So, but even like what Liana was talking earlier, like sometimes things are seeping into your spirit and like you can feel it seeping into your spirit. And sometimes, you know me, I'm like a jovial person. I'm there and whatever here, I found myself more withdrawing because I see so much things happening around me that I don't want to be a part of. But like, there's just literally no escape, like what Joshua is talking about. Like, it's so hard being in this particular environment um, because you're here, you're, we're on an island, right? And there's not even Uber here. So you can't even like get up and go as you'd freely like to, right? Um, and it's just surrounded, you're, you're, you're surrounded by a lot of, I don't know how else to say it, but just sin, <laughs> you know? And you try, like you try your very best to, to stay on that path and not get involved. But um, a friend of mine call it your default setting. Like, it's almost like our default setting is to go there. And like Liana says, it's almost like a conscious everyday warfare where you have to war against who you were 
and who you want to be, who you want to be for Christ, or who that third person that the enemy is trying to pull you into being. Sometimes it's not even your past that's pulling you, but just a different lifestyle that is kind of like like blinking over here. And I remember one night they had a party here. I mean, I have, yeah, who don't know? May I have, yeah, right? <laughs> and they had a party here and it was an all black party. And everybody's like, you know, I'm very friendly. So everybody's like, Victoria, come into the party, right? And I'm like, no, you know, it's not my thing yet. <laughs> it's not my thing. And, you know, words are passed. You know, man, you have to come, man, and, you know, come support, man, and something and something. And I know I look good. I do. And I and I accept that. And um, I try to cover up a lot. But once in a while, like, um, like if I have on a jacket and I like have on a leggings underneath, somebody might say to me, you know, I'm, and I'm just being completely honest on this platform, which is just crazy. Somebody might say to you, say, yo, like, you look nice, you know, you know. And um, on that particular night at this party and I saw the outfits, I was so, like, tempted to go. Just to, I just wanted to dress up just to let go and just dress up and just be sexy and just go. You know, I mean, I'm going to wind up on nobody or drink. I don't even drink alcohol or anything. But I just wanted to be in that environment. And I was so ashamed of even thinking like that. I didn't go. I stayed in my room. I put on a movie. I read my Bible. But for the whole night, it's almost like I was literally trying to talk myself out of not going. And I was so ashamed of the fact that I was even struggling with that because even if I was home, I wouldn't even, it wouldn't even cross my mind to, to go to, I probably wouldn't even get invited to something like that. And here is like for the entire week, all I was hearing is Vicky, you're coming to the party, right? We know so you look good in us, so can't wait to see your outfit. And I'm like, no, it's not my time, I think. And I was so ashamed of the fact that I even struggled with wanting to go. I really wanted to be there, you know? And just so many other things, you know, has been happening. And it's almost like a, it's, it's just a constant push and pull of fighting. Like, that's not who you are. That's not who you want to be. I know you would enjoy that, but no. And sometimes it, it breaks my heart, not because, not the temptation of, oh, I want to go, and it breaks my heart that I don't get to go, but it breaks my heart that I want to go because a part of me feel like I should have been over that already. You know what I mean? And, and that, that, that doesn't make me highly, that doesn't make me feel good about myself because I'm just like, I thought you were more Christian than this. That's the term. <laughs> I thought you were more Christian than this. And I catch myself doing certain things, responding to things in a certain way. And I feel like, like I'm losing my way. You know, earlier when I talk about not stay, staying in your own lane, I feel like I'm drifting. I don't feel like I've drifted completely, like I'm in a totally different lane, but I feel like I'm drifting. And I'm so afraid. I am so afraid. And I am very determined not to lose it. I tell God all the time, it's a Lord, don't let go out for me. Don't. I don't want to be, I can understand when I just became a Christian, I could not understand the idea of turning back like people. We are calling no. Them say people turn back like you're a Christian and you just drop out and just go back to a totally different lifestyle. Sometimes people have been a Christian for like 10 years and next thing you know, they're living this lifestyle and they say, oh, she turned back or I even turned back. I couldn't understand it because I find Christianity to be so beautiful. Like it's so amazing, you know? But I get it. It is easier. It is easier to give up. I'm just so scared. I don't have a testimony today. I have a prayer request. I, am... I don't want to go back. I don't want to be a different person. I want to be. I want to be Christian, Vicky. You know. So yeah.
And before I say anything, you can go ahead, Leanna. Um, so what I first want to say is a scripture that literally says, for a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. Vicky, like, I think all of us here have went through that. All of us here go through that. And you essentially lamenting about even wanting to go to the party, it's showing your reverence and your love for God. So even what you said about, I thought I was more Christian than that. You're a human being. And then on top of that, you are, you mentioned the fact that persons were saying from the week before, Vicky, you know, say I come to the party, you know? So like involuntarily, your brain is, is receiving this information. And as a human being, you're going to receive it. Like, I don't want to say receive or accept, but it went, it was in your atmosphere, those words, you know, that thought of you going. So don't allow the enemy to make a condemn yourself. I'm proud that you didn't go. You Like, I'm happy that you didn't go. Don't look at the situation like, oh, I should be so ashamed. Like, why would I ever, or no, like rejoice because you could have gone, you know, but you decided not to and that battle that you were you know you were in with going and not going you won the holy spirit within you won that battle that's a victory right there but at the same time this is a sobering moment because i know why you're lamenting and it's essentially because you're asking yourself what is the state of my soul why why is this thought even getting anywhere with me like what is the state of my mind and that's okay. Through through our prayers and through your prayers and through just your analysis of the situation, I know you're going to do a self-check. And at the same time, remember, I know we can't compromise. We don't be afraid to shut down certain arguments or certain talk, regardless of what people might say. You know, people and their emotions change every minute. But the word of God never changes. You know what is waiting for you at the end of all of this. And God, God is happy that you did not go. He's happy that you allowed him to help you win that battle. So don't fall into condemnation or shame. There's no shame or condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, we know that. But thank you so much for being so transparent because... I know all of us here have been through that same moment, you know, that you went through as it relates to the party. Because we're all young and we see everybody around us in the world doing, seeming like they're having fun. But me and you know, when you got a party, like, it's so shallow, it's so empty. People have to drink, well, some people have to drink for feel nice, you know? It's... Mm -mm. you didn't miss out on anything I don't even know about this person but I know you didn't miss out on anything <laughs> okay so be of good cheer yeah that's it for me I totally agree Eliana and you know Vicky I am so proud of you for struggling let me explain I can completely relate to you no, I know everybody here can relate to you. You know, the other day I was talking to my best friend and I was just telling him that I feel so ashamed that I'm even having these doubts and fears because I should know better. And he shared a verse with me. I'm going to share it with you. And it's from Psalm 37, verses 23 to 24. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall... He shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. You struggling shows your heart posture. It goes to show that you want to what is right. It goes to show that you are still being convicted, Vicky. You are not down. <laughs> if you were down, then you wouldn't be struggling. You would have went to the party. And I am so 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 proud of you i know that the angels in heaven heaven were rejoicing when you said no and when you were at home watching your movie and reading your bible i know that the angels were you know cheering you on just the same 
don't give up Ricky God is on your side God is you know funny you know Chase texted me this week and he said God is rooting for you and I never had that imagery in my mind before that God is like rooting for me. It's like, yes, Julie, go. And I'm saying to you, Vicky, God is saying, go, Vicky, go. You know, you are doing what you have to do, Vicky. You're on the right path. Just keep pushing, girl. Keep pushing. And thank you so much for being so vulnerable. Thank you, everybody, for being so vulnerable. You know, it's so community is so important for moments like these where we can share our stories and we can uplift each other because honestly there be times when we feel weak and we can't we can't do it to ourselves and that's why we're here for each other we're a family to uplift each other and to help each other on this journey so yeah thank you vicky for being so vulnerable thank you joshua and leanna and brandon and janelle although janelle's not here anymore and everybody else who shared thank you so much for being so vulnerable and allowing the Holy Spirit to use you tonight to share your story. And I just want to remind you that even though you may not feel like you have a testimony right now, best believe that your prayer request is the start of your testimony. You are already in your testimony. You are a work in progress. And God is not going to give up on you. So yeah, thanks guys. Thank you so much for sharing. We are at the end of our night or at the end of John at the end of our testimonies and it it has truly been so fulfilling um I said that I'm down for a prayer <laughs> that's fine um Brandon you said that you'd pray as well right um Brandon isn't there just to my prayer request I'll check first and add it. All right. No okay. All right. Thank thanks. So, I love you guys. Thank you. We love you, Vicky. Can I have a volunteer to sing a prayer chorus as well, please? I can do it. Okay. Thanks, Joshua. Uh, yes. <laughs> Love you, Leanna. Love you guys so much. Like, for real, for real. <laughs> the love will talk. All right, Brandon, so when you can, can you share the screen? Joshua can start singing. I'll have the prayer request up in time. All right, Brandon, thanks. You can go ahead, Joshua. All right. I've been changed, healed, freed, delivered. I found joy, peace. Grace and favor, and right now is the moment. Today is the day I've been changed. I've been changed, and I have waited for this moment to come. And I won't let it pass me by. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came unchanged me all my shame 
killed sins forgiven no more chains fear my past is over I've been changed and right now in this moment today is the day I've been changed I've been changed I won't go back I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me i won't go back i can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me amen hallelujah thank you jesus God, I come before you right now, mighty Savior, to follow through with your instruction, oh God, that we can come to you boldly. And so, God, even right now, I throw myself at you boldly as a God who invites us to come. God, before I mention anything, God, I just ask for your forgiveness, even now, that my prayer may come up to you as a sweet incense. God, you heard the cry of your children tonight, oh mighty Savior, and I ask God that you just be God in their situation. God, I pray for reassurance, I pray for comfort, I pray for victory. Embrace us even now, mighty Savior, that what may feel like a battle, like warfare right now, even mighty Savior, will simply be the stepping stones for powerful testimonies that you will work on our behalf. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, God, I say thank you in advance for the mighty things that you will do in our lives, almighty God, that when we reflect in the future, we will be able to see your hand at work and we will say thank you, Lord, for your work in our lives in this journey. God, even right now, I just want to place before you my sister in Christ, Julie. God, you know what she's been struggling with. God, she has been open and honest with us and with you about what's going on. And so, God, I ask even now that from heaven that you reach down and hold her face in your hands and you speak peace in her life. That even as you stood up on that boat in the sea and said, peace be still, that the waves in Julie's life, even now, Almighty Savior, will stand still. God, we are reminded that everything that happens in the universe is subject to your authority. And even now, Almighty God, I ask that the anxiety that Julie is experiencing will be reminded that you have all authority, Almighty Savior. And so, Mighty God, let the peace that passes all understanding replace any resemblance of anxiety in her life, mighty Savior. But if there's anything worrying her mind, reassure her, oh God, that you are in control. God, I ask that if there are other circumstances going on, oh mighty Savior, that you work them out for her good and your glory, oh mighty Savior, and that the testimony Julie will be able to have will reach somebody who is struggling with save, and they will be able to find similar victory. And God, I ask that you give her a fresh, full sleep, oh mighty Savior that the worries of her mind will be silenced and she'll be able to have restful sleeps at night. God, this anonymous person is praying, asking for prayers for her family and their relationship with God. Even I know, mighty Savior, ask that you embrace this family even now and that you whisper into the, their ears the reminder that you are their God. Not just everybody's God or God here or there, but their God, almighty Savior. Remind them of how you have come through for them. Remind them, Almighty Savior, of the ways in which things could have gone had you not intervened. And so, God, having reminded them of that, oh God, I said they will stand firm in that reminder and that they will day after day continue to seek you. God, if there are any circumstances in their lives, I ask God that you just step in and do you, that you will be lifted up and glorified, oh God, through their victory story. Can I place before you, my brother, Matthew, and like so many of us, he's facing temptations. But God, like so many of us, the truth of your promises remains the same, that there is a victory in the name of Jesus, that your grace is still sufficient even in this day and age. 
And so, God, I give you thanks in advance for the victory for every single person here who is struggling with sin. God, we know that temptation is from the enemy, almighty Savior, but victory comes from you. And so we don't claim the temptation, but we claim the victory that has already been promised. God, you say you have already overcome the world. And so in the mighty name of Jesus, we hold on to the full stop that you have already preordained for our stories, almighty God. When you said it is finished, God, you were proclaiming a truth for every single person who would claim the name of Jesus Christ. And so for all of us who struggle, oh God, remind us that it is already finished. So God, we praise your name that we already have the victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Continue to pour upon us the strength that we need, almighty Savior, oh God to hold true to your promises. And Matthew, God is praying a special request, oh God, for the partner that you have in store for him. God, even right now, God, whoever that partner may be, I ask that you bless her, that you provide for her, that you embrace her, that day by day you continue to mold her into your beautiful image and that you make her complete in you and you make Matthew complete in you. Help them, oh God, not to seek completion in another person, but in you first and foremost. And when it is your timing, oh God, Ask God that you will lead Matthew to his wife and his wife to him, Almighty Savior, and that their union will glorify your name. God, I pray the same for the partners that you have in store for the people in this group in work in progress, those who are here and those who aren't here, Almighty Savior. God, in your own timing, make those relationships foster and grow and bloom to your name's honor and glory, Almighty Savior. Help us to stay faithful until that time, Almighty God. Not simply as purity for somebody else, oh God, but because we are simply your children following your instructions. And so, God, we say thanks in advance. God, if there's anything I feel of asking, fail not to grant it unto us even now. I say glory to your name, almighty Savior. Thank you, Jesus. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Most righteous and heavenly Father, I give you thanks that you are a God who cares and hears our prayers, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are real and alive, that we don't have to travel somewhere to try and find you. That we don't have to bring you gifts for you to respond to us. We're in this moment, God, and which is exactly what we're doing. Lord, before I pray on behalf of my, my brothers and sisters, I pray, Lord, that you will search my heart. If there's anything, God, that is not of you, if there's any pride or jealousy or fear or whatever the case may be, God, I pray that you just rid my heart of that and replace it with a heart that is more like yours, God. Speak through me as I pray on behalf of my family, now, God. Forgive me of my sins. And thank you, Father. First, Lord, I'd like to pray for Geraldine, whose father is in the hospital, God. I pray, Lord, that your will may be done. I thank you, God, that you are the master healer, that at the sound of your name, God, that anything is possible, that healing is possible, that miracles can be done in your name, Father. Lord, we have seen time and time again how you have healed the sick, that you have even raised the dead, God. And I pray, Lord, that you will do the same for Geraldine's father right now. Pray, Lord, you touch his body. May his body be whole once more. And even in this time, Lord, while he's in the hospital, I pray that you touch his heart. May this time be a time where he can draw even closer to you, God, in spite of his circumstances. I pray, Lord, that you're will may be done in his life, in Geraldine's life, and in their family's life and our whole Father. I give you thanks, God, for victory right now, in Jesus' name. I pray for my brother Joshua, who is praying that he will do all that he can to receive all. Mm, yes, yeah, so that he's asking that he will do all that he can, Lord, to to do what you have called him to do. And he's praying that for everyone else. God, this is such a humble prayer. It's so easy to become complacent. God, it's so easy to just want to sit and allow life to go by. But we know, God, that this Christian journey isn't a passive one, but one that you have called us to be active in. I pray, Lord, that 
you will strengthen Joshua, that you will give him the the strength, the, the energy, the courage, God. I pray, Lord, that this, if there's anything that is blocking Joshua from truly doing what you have called him to do, that he won't be afraid, that he wouldn't even give it a second thought, Lord, but to cut it off right now. I pray, Lord, that you will use him as the mighty man of God that he is to bring down strongholds, God, that you will use him to touch the lives of others and that his life may be touched, Father. I pray, Lord, that your name may be glorified in his life and in all our lives right now and for those who are under the sound of my voice and those who aren't here right now, God. I pray, Lord, that you help us on this journey. It's not easy, God. It really is not easy. And sometimes it feels easier to just throw in the towel. But we know, God, that it's not worth it. Life without you is not worth it, God. So help us, carry us for the times that we can't seem to drag our own legs, God. Send a, a word to us in the times that we need it the most, God. And help us, Father, so that at the end of the day, we all may be able to hear you say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. And last, Lord, I pray for, I place Brandon's request before you, praying for reassurance and victory for Joshua and Vicky and for all of us. Yes, God, as I was saying, sometimes it's, it's so discouraging, God. This fight can be so discouraging at times. But I thank you, Lord, that you have sent your Holy Spirit to dwell among us, to live within us, God, our comforter and our friend. So I pray, Lord, that you just reassure us in this time. Remind us of all the things that you have promised us. I pray, Lord, that spiritual amnesia will not be ours. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to walk up as valiant warriors. Use us, Lord. Use us in this state that we're in right now. And I give you thanks that we already know how this war will end, that it will end in victory. You have already said that it is finished. And God, we give you thanks that it is finished. So help us to hold tight onto that promise, God. Even when distractions from the enemy is coming left, right, and center, pray that you help us to fight, that you help us to fight with everything within us. And when we don't have enough in us, Lord, I pray that you will give us what we need to keep on fighting on this journey. I give you thanks, God, that you care and love us so much, that you will do exactly that that you will give us all the equipments that we need it's just for us to see your face one day god oh what a love that is may we never take your love for granted and i pray lord that the love that you pour out on us that we will pour out on our friends and our family on the ones on the people who we may not like so much i pray lord that our lives may be a reflection of your love we give you thanks, God, for for this space that we have work in progress. I pray, Lord, that you just continue to allow it to grow for every person that has passed through, God, that something will be touched and changed within them, that they will not leave the same way that they came, God. I give you thanks that you are still in the miracle working business and for those who may be struggling with whatever they may be struggling with right now, God. I pray, Lord, that you will encourage them and remind them that it is possible to live a holy life. It is possible to live a sinful, a sinless life, God. You, with you, all things are possible. So I pray, Lord, that they hold on to that truth. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. We give you thanks. In your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. I I feel fulfilled. I feel so full right now. I am so grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for coming out, for sharing your stories, for interacting, and you know, just allowing the holy spirit to use you next week i don't know what we have planned we'll talk about that later in the group chat but until then guys stay safe 
I love you so much. I remember that God loves you even more. Continue living uh, a godly life. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye, everyone. Have a good night.